A box girl is a very boring sounding thing. The reason I really like the story, it's like a detective story. And there are three characters. There's, a, there's an engineer called Robert Stevenson, who's the same Robert Stevenson who was involved in Stevenson's rocket with his dad, George. There's an iron worker called William Fairburn, who just operated this wrought iron yard populated probably with lots of young urchin-like kids who were bang bashing in rivets and you can imagine flames and sparks all, all over the place. And then there's a more cerebral academic fellow called Eden Hodgkinson who was a professor at University College London. Robert Stevenson got the job to run the railway from London up to Anglesey. One of the big natural obstacles in, in the way was the Menai Straits, which you have to go across about a mile of very fast-flowing tidal water. To get across this, you had to build a bridge of some sort. And to carry the trains in those days, which weighed several hundred tonnes, you needed something fairly sturdy. And at the same time, the tide was going in and out. The currents were really strong. The water was very deep. And so Stevenson came up with this idea of building the bridge in three sections, but each section being really, really long and being floated out and then lifted up into position. They said, well, that's the proposition. We'll just make these things. They'll be 500 feet long. We'll have three of them or so, and we'll lift them up and it'll all be fine. And of course, nobody knew how on earth to do it. It had never been done before. So Stevenson got hold of Fairburn in his ironworker's yard and said, right, I want you to do some experiments. They did some experiments on the strongest thing they could think of, which was a tube. And they did quite big experiments, maybe 20 foot long pieces. And they just did loads and loads and loads of these things. They loaded them up with as much as they could hang from the middle. And every time they broke, they added a bit and another bit and another bit and another bit. So what happened was the thing bent like that and the bit in the middle buckled. And so they put some more material there and then did it again and it went... It, parted company at the bottom, so they put some more material there. And they got through this sequence in about six weeks, at the end of which they couldn't carry as much as they wanted. And so they had to do something else. So they said, well, instead of circles, we'll do squares now. On the basis that if you make something square, you've got as much material as far away from the middle as possible, so it's likely to be a little bit stronger. They went through another sequence and started making bigger and bigger experiments, until in the end they made them 75 feet long, and they were eight feet deep, some of them, and these are huge things, mm -hmm. just as a, just to test. You can't imagine many universities nowadays doing these things. And um, they got them stronger and stronger and stronger, and they gradually developed this language of really high strength and very low material, so really high performance, basically. And by this time, these things had got so big that they realized that instead of running the trains on the top, they were so huge, <laughs> they could run the trains right through the middle. They said, right, that's it, that's what we're going to do. And the reason I like it is... It was a fantastic piece of research that actually turned out to be so valuable that we're still using the knowledge 170 years later. Lots and lots of road bridges, lots and lots of railway bridges, all sorts of things have the box girder as their principle. We've used it lots of times in other forms, sometimes Vs, you know, we tune the shape of it. But the most recent and most successful time we've used it was we did a bridge over the River Tees at Stockton called the Infinity Bridge. And that is made out of very tight box girder sections which build on all of the knowledge that originated from Stevenson and his crew 170 years earlier. Had they not started on that journey we probably couldn't have built this very very slinky bridge nowadays. When you see these things standing there they look as if they've always been there and it's, you forget how much groundbreaking thinking has to go into getting them there in the first place. So I think the first thing is to learn the value of Research is something which is not to be sniffed at, not to be thought of as being an extravagance, not to be thought, thought of as something just for pharmaceutical companies. It's really central to moving human knowledge forward. And the Box Girder Bridge is, is such a fantastic invention, big scale, and it's affected so many people and it's opened up so many communication routes that it just becomes part of the fabric that we all take for granted. But actually, some, there were some really bright people involved in putting it together in the first place.